Hi, welcome back. So this is the last segment on crystals. We'll talk about surfaces and Miller indices. And uh, surfaces are critical to semiconductors because our real devices have finite extent. They are layered and there could be dangling bonds or impurities or imperfections on these surfaces. And that's why we really need to deal with them. And uh, as we talked earlier, there is preferential planes in which crystals can shear. Um, so, so we'll learn how to describe some of these surfaces. So that, that is the point here when you, you know, deal with surface reconstruction, for example, in a, in a silicon crystal or gallium arsenide crystal on the top surface. These, uh, these elements that are sort of sticking up at an angle, they, they actually move around a little bit. They tilt one way or another or shift over. Um, so there's something called surface reconstruction that is of, of critical relevance. And the, knowing the number of atoms on certain surfaces is important uh, in, in those regards. All right, so um, now let's look at a simple cube and the de definition of planes. So a simple cube has, of course, the, the simple six surfaces. And um, here you would do x, we have a typical coordinate system x, y, z uh, in the three-handed uh, system, a right-oriented uh, uh, system. And uh, so you have a top surface, and we would declare the 0, 0, 1 surface. And you might have a uh, surface that's orthogonal to y, we call that a zero, one, zero surfaces, and there's a surface uh, orthogonal to say x, and that could be a minus a one, zero, zero uh, surface. So, so we can have these, these simple surfaces throughout the cube, but obviously there's, there's more complicated ones that maybe cut through the diagonal of the cube as, as indicated here or uh, going through a bigger cell in this direction uh, like this, or there could be diagonal in three dimensions. And we'll learn more on how to come up with these indices. And by the end of this section, you'll have familiarity with this uh, indexing of surfaces. And by the end of the course, you'll be using it uh, for a variety of uh, crystal structures, no problem. All right. So, what's the uh, simple construction process for uh, such a system? So you have your uh, set up your, uh, your your edges of the unit cell uh, uh, in X Y Z. You take um, three intersection points of your surface within that cell. All right. So uh, you have intercepts here. We look at uh, X is here at at two. You have y at 3 and z at 1. So we have these, these guys here. And now uh, you normalize them or rationalize them. So you divide by the uh, common uh, uh, denominator, which in this case is 6. So you, uh, you come up with a, a normalized number that is now uh, 3, 6, 2, 6, and 6, 6. And that surface here would be called a 3, 2, 6 uh, surface. All right. You could have a negative intercept. In this case here, the z is at minus 2. So here we go. Uh, but then you follow the, the same nomenclature. You normalize by the... Uh, most common denominator, in this case, again, 6, and you end up again with uh, 2, 3, minus 3, and the nomenclature in the literature and, and with crystallographers is that you put the minus sign on top. All right. So um, you could have another case where you, your plane is running parallel to one of these uh, axes of your basis. And here again in the cubic one, you might have one that runs parallel to z. So mathematically, the intercept of this plane here with z is at infinity. So 
it's of course a concept, so now you can uh, rationalize it, the common denominator with infinity you don't uh, worry about. So again, it's a 6 here, and um, your index then is again 3, 2, 0, and you divide by infinity and come up with a 0. So this particular surface would be the 3, 2, 0 surface that has intersects with 2 and 3 here, 2 and 3 here. All right. Now, let's uh, make this, uh, elevate this a little bit more uh, through a mathematical approach, not just a cooking recipe. So, let's look at this Miller index uh, uh, plane that we had before. We've computed uh, intersects at 2, 3, and 1, right? So the, the point was at 2, 3, 1, and we computed Miller indices in, according to the recipe to be 3, 2, 6. So where does this mathematically come from? So uh, you can represent um, this by vectors. You start out from uh, the x-axis point here and describe a vector r1 and you can describe a vector r2 and those two vectors span this surface, right? So uh, as you uh, describe these vectors more in vector notation, um, you get a, here's your vector r1 minus 2, 0 in y, uh, 1 in z, and the vector r2 runs in the xy plane, so its z component is 0, and again the vector is minus 2, 3. All right, now let's build a cross product between this, these two vectors, and we get 3, 2, 6, and that gets us um, the vector indices are the same as the Miller indices. And of course, the vector product gives us the vector that leads out of this surface, right? So the specification of the vectors normal to a particular plane are the Miller indices. That's the mathematical definition. All right. We can also determine the angle between two planes within that approach. Um, so we need to know the angle between two vectors, and that gets us really the inter inner product. So let's take any vector here of this plane like this. We describe in plane, we have, we have plane 1 over here. This is plane 1, and choose a vector that's normal um, in, in our basis set representation. Let's take a different plane, plane number 2, and describe it and uh, determine the normalized vector. So this could have had a vector symbol on top here. And if we take the dot products between these two vectors, we get a number expression. And if we take the inverse uh, of the cosine, we would have the angle between these two planes. Okay, so this phi here is the angle between these two planes. All right. Why is this relevant? Well, um, crystals are grown uh, on a, um, an ingot in a certain direction. They are sliced in, uh, in, in, uh, from this ingot, and they're marked with these wedges. And you kind of need to know uh, the surfaces of these crystals, and that is how they are encoded. So let's take uh, uh, two vectors here, a, uh, a vector uh, in the z direction, 1, 0, 0, and a diagonal in the y in the z direction, and um, define uh, an, the normals of those. So we need to normalize uh, vector 1 is simple, it's 1, 0, 0, but vector 2 needs to be normalized by the square root of 2. And if we want to know the angle between those two vectors, Somehow the square roots didn't come out on this computer. So uh, the cosine between these is a zero, so the vector is 90 degrees, which kind of makes sense here as, you, as it's indicated here. So the 011 surface is normal to the 100 surface. 
All right. Um, here's another example for a, um, a cell um, where we want to find the O to one direction on this uh, on this uh, silicon wafer, and um, we have a definition here of the O11 crystal direction that has the long primary flat on this crystal, and we want to find the O21 direction. You follow the same path. You have N1 is the vertical one that's coming out of the plane here, so in the growth direction. And so N1 is 100. And again, we have the primary flat 011 normalized uh, by square root of 2. And we want to figure out where is the O21 uh, a vector, and we'll compute it against n1. So we'll take n1 times this this vector of uh, a one. Here's one, o o, and we want to find it against o to one. We take the dot product and that normalize it. So we know that uh, o to one is normal to 100, and we'll do the same with the N2 vector, and the inner angle that we find here is 18 degrees with respect to the O11 direction. So we can measure the angle uh, between uh, the desired uh, O21 direction and the O11 direction as 18 degrees. Okay, and there we have now the uh, o to one vector. All right. There's one other uh, caveat for um, uh, for hexagonal systems where you look at surfaces like this. There you have four indices. Uh, the first three indices always sum to zero. They deal with a, a rotational symmetry on on an additional axis. Uh, we don't use these too much in this course, but you need to be aware that for hexagonal system, you might have four. All right, so that concludes the, um, the very short uh, lecture set on, on crystals. And it's motivated by us uh, learning about the semiconductors, but we need to be aware of the variety of different crystal directions. And we expand it from 1 to 2 and to 3D. And uh, that should give you a, sort of a basic understanding of crystals, the space groups, angles, uh, densities, etc. And there will be a couple of exercises and homework examples that deal with this material. So these crystalline materials make the basic building blocks. And um, within these building blocks, we can do some quantum mechanical calculations that allow us to calculate the charge density and the velocities of these systems. and um, We'll highlight some of the, the important materials like silicon gallium arsenide. They're not simple Bravi lattices, but they're Bravi lattices with a basis. So they're more complex than the most simple space group representations in the Bravi lattice. And uh, we calculated some crystal planes and directions that are basically vector algebra applied to crystal directions. So with that, that concludes the, the sections on crystals. and. Um, Thank you very much.